Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Philip Sadiq Show. We are with Tamar Kari Brown. Kali. Kali. Like lollipop. Like lollipop. See, Kali like lolly. I, you know what? See, this is why I, I... People know me on my show. I slaughter names. I'm notorious. Okay. So, but that's okay. You, I want to give you a dance hall name. Name killer. <laughs> are you from the islands, girl? I'm from Brooklyn. Oh. So oh, proxy. Be, oh, okay. Let me straighten <laughs> up. Proxy. Let me straighten up. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You, did, I say, compose of mu music for this film. Yes. How did you do that? Because it is a period piece. Well, um, in terms of the approach for the score, mm -hmm. it, it wasn't about being a period piece because they have a lot of diegetic or source music that covers yes. that. Okay. So the score's job was to underscore the movement in terms of the scenery, the landscape, um, the stories of the characters, mm -hmm. the, the character of the farm, um, different environmental or emotional aspects of the film. So music is character? It can be, right. yeah. It's definitely uh, kind of giving a bed or a foundation for some of the things that are happening emotionally, internally with mm -hmm. the characters or um, just uh, enhancing the environment, telling the the different layers of the story and the music. Right. So the music actually also helps push the narrative forward Absolutely. instead of like keeping it static in one place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So when you compose a song, do you feel it from the do you feel it from the inside? Um, that is the type of composer that I am most mm -hmm. often. With this project, um, D and I had lengthy discussion. Uh, previous to it. I knew about the project for some time. I was able to read the novel and really familiarize myself with the characters, um, the mood of the story. So I kind of mm -hmm. put myself in the, the, the space of Mudbound, uh, the time, the location, um, got my, my, my vibration in that way. Mm -hmm. And then um, we talked about, she did a lot of like visualization, adjective type um, instruction. So it wasn't like... Um, I need a, a 40 sound, da, 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 da. It was about trying, failing, trying again, uh, being stuck, because of course it's called Mudbound. So trying to convey these emotions of frustration, dread, or whatever the, the back family stories, things mm -hmm. that were going on. Um, and that's, we, we worked with adjectives and feelings, things of that nature. And of course she knew what instrumentation she wanted. She knew that she wanted strings. Okay, now when you're, as I said, putting the music in, when you're dropping the music in, and you feel the music, if there's, let's say, um, an angry scene or very violent scene, how do you pull yourself out of that? So, this was about not pulling myself out of anything. It was Is about right? giving myself over to mm -hmm. it and kind of being an observer and a listener to what was happening mm -hmm. and then giving a voice to that. Wow. Can you say that one more time, please? I'm still processing that. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to process Being that. Being an observer and mm -hmm. a listener to what was happening and then giving a voice to that. Okay. Now, also in the film, Mary J. Blige, mm -hmm. was she, did she listen to any of the music? Or because she's an artist, she's, you know, mm -hmm. world-known, renowned artist. Did she listen to any of it? No. Or it was, it was like your, this is my thing. I came in at the last mm -hmm. when the film was essentially done okay. to compose the score yes and that was the extent of my um, involvement with the exception of I did sing one of the songs that is in the film but just as like an atmospheric song so it's a, a Bill Bailey so I kind of like a jack of all trades so I did a, a quick little voice quick thing little. there but okay. yeah my job was just to come in and compose the score and that, that happened after the film was cut Okay. Would you like to sing maybe four words or something that you sang? For Bill Bailey? <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar? Uh -huh. With the won't you come home, Bill Bailey? You know that, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, because it's the 40s, so it's, it's, it right. comes on the radio at some point in the movie. And okay. so when you see that, you'll know that's me singing. And when I hear that, okay. Mm -hmm. we, just bro we just broke something, you guys. Oops. We just broke something. What did we break? No, 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 no. We're going to listen specifically. Won't you come home, Bill Bailey? Won't yeah. you come yeah, home? Yeah, and that'll be me. <laughs> I can't I'm embarrassed. I love that. I can't wait. We're going to wrap it up, you guys. Mm -hmm. But um, 
I guess I'm sure a lot of folks will, it'll probably be a lot of conversations after the film. And, and that I think is a goal for sure mm -hmm. f for D to have conversation, to have people realize that what was old is new again and sometimes never went away. And without us confronting these things about ourselves, they probably will never change. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll end it on that, you guys. We will see you later in the show.